हाई एवरी वन वेलकम टू आर फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट क्लास आई एम गोइंग टू टेक यू ऑल थ्रू द थियोरी पार्ट ऑफ ईच एंड एवरी चैप्टर गिवेन इन आर मॉड्यूल ऑफ फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट ओके बट इवन आफ्टर आई फिनिश द चैप्टर विथ यू टूडे इफ यू ऑल हैव फिनिश स्टडिंग एफ एम अलॉन्ग विथ माई यू नो प्रीवियस नोट्स एंड द एंटायर Uh, sums which we have done, okay. All the question solving which we have already completed, then you can come to the theory section and study your theory, okay. So once you have solved the sums, once you have been through, uh, you know the concepts which we have studied and the sums which we have solved. After that, when you will come and you will read the theory, it is going to help you a lot because it's going to become very simple, okay. So this is the. a uh, flow in which you are going to finish your fm first you all are going to do all the previous topic wise you know concepts the sums which we have solved after that and then come to the theory in the last okay now beginning with the lesson number nature significance scope and financial management this is like your first lesson okay uh, however it covers the entire brief of what is financial management means it gives you a brief of all the chapters which they have discussed later on topic wise okay so understanding first financial management it has got two words okay financial management now what is financial financial means finance and another word for finance is nothing but money and management will be of what then managing money management of money management of money will be my financial managing okay so meaning of finance is what okay it the finance is basically the money with which a business is operating okay it is the backbone of any business okay it is the medium through which operations are taken ahead activities are carried on in the business and which obviously then helps the organization to achieve their objective okay so we are going to talk about finance first so finance is nothing but it is a backbone of any business i told you it helps in defining the feasible area of operation for any type of activities okay so basically only what is operations is going to lead you to the profit for operations what operations you are going to do your business activities in order to do this activity you need finance okay so finance is the medium through which you are going to attain your objective any business organization okay it is the foundation of any kind of a strategic planning so today if i want to run a business first thing i'm going to think about the capital first thing i'm going to think about the finance okay and how am i going to manage that finance in order to run my business activities and have efficient utilization of whatever is there with me in order to earn profit right meaning of business finance is that's just what i said okay meaning of business point when i think from a business point of view it will be known as a business finance okay business we do business in order to earn money so efficient planning of the finance okay procurement or managing the entire finance of the business procurement and also utilization that entire thing is known as managing the finance of a business so definition of financial management is given by various people okay uh, there are so many definitions one of it is it is concerned with the efficient use of an important economic resource which is capital funds okay it is an application of general managerial principles to the area of financial decision making okay everybody has given their own version of the definition of financial management as what we have studied and understood it is basically concerned with raising of the funds then create the value of the assets conduct your activities okay efficient utilization allocation of the funds in order to carry out your operations and thereby maximize the value of the fund maximize your profit by utilizing that fund okay so this is in the nutshell what is financial management correct now <clears throat> basically business finance 
और फाइनेंशियल मैनेजमेंट फॉर द बिजनेस इज दिस इकोनॉमिक एक्टिविटीज ओके वेन एवर देर इज अ फाइनेंशियल नीड फाइनेंशियल नीड ऑब्वियसली देर इज अ स्ट्रैटेजिक प्लानिंग इन वर्ल्ड दैट फॉर दिस पर्टिकुलर फाइनेंशियल नीड वेयर एम आई गोइंग टू हाउ एम आई गोइंग टू प्रोक्योर दिस कैपिटल एंड देन आई एम गोइंग टू एलोकेट दिस कैपिटल यूटिलाइजेशन ऑफ दिस कैपिटल फॉर वेरियस एसेट्स I will use this assets for carrying out my operating activities, and thereby earn profits. Okay, so business finance is also defined by various experts. Okay, some of the definitions have been given by of all the experts. Financial management also. These are the again some more definitions been given by the experts for the financial management. Okay. Financial management is concerned with efficient use of important economic resource. This is what we did even the starting Solomon. Now, if I tell you financial uh, management, okay, broadly there are three things. Okay, financial management broadly it talks about FDI. FDI. Okay, so whenever this word hits financial management, we are talking about this three letters fdi now what is this three letters i'll take you through the chart okay so everything strategic planning means doing the planning taking the decisions so we are talking about financial decisions which i just said it is fdni in financial decisions there are three important decisions which i have to take one is your financing decisions f then is your investment decision your dividend decision is d and i is your investment decision financing decision is basically talking about what type of finance okay what should be your capital which you want to raise should it be in form of equity should be in form of debt what should be the structure where will be the profit maximum where will be the shareholders value maximum in the structure so we have also studied about the capital structure lesson okay it's capital structure subject okay topic the capital structure is all what is about financial decision and also if i am understanding that okay this my capital structure has to be only equity or only debt or mixture of debt and equity i have to also ascertain the cost of capital along with that okay one very important thing i have said this even earlier that whenever you are studying financial management subject always read and understand the concepts from the company point of view think that you are company and you are doing all this from the company point of view if that will be your focus your structure you know your main idea is that we are talking from this company organization point of view all your topics will become very clear okay so if i am talking about financing decisions i am talking about the company about my company my financing decisions will be what whether should i take equity whether should i you know take money in form of debt what should be my best capital structure ascertaining the cost of capital that will be my financing decision okay now obviously the givers of the capital the providers of the capital okay my shareholders expect something out of me so for the company it is the cost of capital for them it is the return for the investors it is the return for company it is going to be the cost of capital obviously so then here it comes where in you have to pay the dividend to the equity shareholders so we have also done a lesson or topic which is known as dividend policy whether should i give dividend okay dividend should be given not given see these are the decisions which are taken by the management once you take a decision you cannot you know come back from it if you have declared a dividend you have to pay the dividend if you have not declared a dividend not paying a dividend you will be questioned that why you have not you paid the dividend you have earned the profit this profit belongs to the shareholders so you need to justify every decision which you are taking in the organization from the management point of view and all this belongs to strategic planning why because these are the decisions taken by the management 
okay top level management takes strategic decisions strategic planning is done by them so we have also done the topics of dividend policy how to understand and what should be the best dividend okay what should be the rate of dividend when dividend can be given when it cannot be given all that is also are one of the topics which we have studied and then investment decision is all about capital budgeting capital budgeting and working capital capital budgeting why because it is talking about the capital required for my capital assets fixed assets my plant my machinery okay all those assets which are having a huge investment huge amount of money huge amount of funds which is required okay and working capital management okay working capital management is manage the amount required okay for my day to day operations working capital we have done that working capital is nothing but your current assets minus your current liabilities okay so if you see all these are the topics which we have covered in the form of and we have solved different sums based on each topic so financial management is nothing but this three important pillars of financial management is your financing decision your dividend decision and your investment decision okay so coming back to the theory that is what they have given capital budgeting investment decision huge amount of investment is required for these type of capital assets okay investment decision see they have told you they are covering in lesson 2 capital budgeting then you this is the investment decision relates to the decision made by the investors or the top level management with respect to the amount of funds that are going to be deployed in the investment opportunities because once these decisions are taken you cannot turn back okay because huge amount of corpus is involved and then you have your financing decisions okay related to raising of the finance how much how much finance you need okay what should be the source short term long term type everything okay then nature scope and objectives of financial management this you can read this is all what we are talking about okay now in detail each and every decision is been given okay so first one talking about investment decision okay it is the most important decision why because it creates the value it creates the assets capital assets which create the value for the business okay your worth is been decided with the number of assets which you also have right so investment ordinarily means the utilization of money or profits or returns for profits and for returns how you are going to utilize that money it is about creating physical assets with that money to carry on the business or purchasing shares or debentures of the company etc in case of mergers or takeovers okay that will become your investment decision where you are completely buying the entire business of the firm right now investments necessarily involve uncertainty where to invest what to invest we really don't know so it is uncertain and therefore it is quite risky so if i have a finance manager which i have you know i have appointed in my organization and if i tell him that uh, i have to do investment i have to buy a particular plant and machinery okay now what type how much is involved what will be the life of the asset everything has to be analyzed everything has to be looked after okay so within a firm a finance manager decides that in which activity resources of the firm needs to be analyzed okay what and where and what exactly needs money right now marketing manager may like to have a new showroom production manager will Uh, with a new machine and a personal manager may propose for higher wages and salaries everything is there so everything has to be kept in mind channelized and then the decision is taken okay new areas new business new activities new territories okay new products increasing profits all this has to be brought in one place okay 
it is to be noted that the financial management investment decisions relate to capital budgeting in other words investment decisions are concerned with the question whether adding to capital asset today will increase the revenue for tomorrow obviously any capital assets are those assets okay are those assets with which you are going to generate revenues for tomorrow so plant and machinery a capital asset it is a capital expense like we have also studied in accounts okay that is why we put in the asset and the depreciation which we are putting to that particular asset is the amount we charge to the pnl on yearly basis correct therefore investment decision have become very important area in the decision making process of a company okay it is very very important there are long term activities are involved when you are doing investment decisions okay so investment decisions we have capital budgeting obviously then that will also uh, help me understand the cost of capital risk is involved management of liquidity and current assets expansion and contracting in uh, contraction involving business failures and reorganization buy or hire or lease an asset all these decisions have to be taken based on these areas okay now the factors which determine factors determining the investment decision the three more important factors okay which are as follows first one is estimating your capital outlay and what will be the future earnings which will be possible from this particular outlay availability of that capital and the cost of capital and the setting up the standards by which to select a project for implementation which will give you maximum returns okay so capital expenditure decisions are nothing but these are your investment decisions clear okay second one is your financing decisions so capital structure determining the best capital structure or financing decision is the next step okay so first i have ascertained i need capital okay i need capital assets i have already ascertained my outlay where i am what i have to deploy my funds for so now raising the funds okay so financial decision will be the next step after you are finishing your capital decision investment decision okay a look at the balance sheet of the company shows its sources whether it is a long term finance short term finance how you want to procure it equity bank loan etc okay so financing decisions are concerned with the determination of how much funds to procure from the various sources available that is the fixing mix or capital structure okay so determining the best capital structure is very very important next is your dividend decision after you have earned the profit it is about distribution of your profits so dividend decision is another major area of your financial management okay they have to decide whether the firm should distribute all the profits whether retain them or distribute the portion and retain the balance okay so how much should be retained how much should be distributed how to apply this dividend policy where the market price of the shares also to be taken into account earnings value added to the shareholder everything okay so this three main important things are there in this chapter okay now you are i'm sorry now your decision criteria okay on what basis are you going to take the decisions so obviously any organization is going to take the decision based on the objective which they want to achieve okay the main objective of any organization you will see is maximizing the return and minimizing the cost okay now other important thing is value of the firm risk and return this is nothing but your capital asset pricing model you'll remember this capital asset pricing model 
Yes, ma'am. Anybody can tell me in short what is it? What what do we understand with this capital asset pricing model? You all remember the formula in which we used uh, to yes. find the cost of equity yes. or rate of return. Risk free return plus beta or minus or. Ah, so we were saying that the return, expected return. of any investor is nothing but rf plus beta into rm minus rf right where rf is nothing but the risk free rate of return rm is the market risk rm minus rf is nothing but the market premium okay same thing if you have this thing you know uh, there in your mind you will be able to understand this particular diagram now see in this diagram return is given on y axis and risk is given on x axis okay so when the risk is zero risk free rate of return like say fd in the bank risk free totally is there any risk involved nothing risk free rate of return is 6% here it is 6% there is no risk involved at all so my return is 6% at risk with where it is zero here it is 6% now if i am expecting more return i want to go from risk free and i want to have in market i am going to get a return of 18% okay if i want this particular return there will be a risk involved right there will be a risk involved if i am moving to the market in market all this it is risky so if i am expecting a higher return which i have noted over here as 18% that means there will be a risk also involved higher the risk higher the return so as and when i keep on moving with more risk my return will also keep on increasing so now i am going to get this additional from 6% i have gone ahead and moved to 18% now i am getting 18% so i am getting this additional 12% what is that market premium why because i am ready to take the risk of beta which is 2 right this is what the chart is talking about okay wherein your return what is the value of firm risk and return so value of the firm your expected or your rate of return will be your rate of return will depend upon the risk which is associated in the market okay so this is so your investment decision your financing decision and your dividend decision all three of them both the things have to be taken into account your return and the risk which is involved that will give you the market value of the firm market value of the all right then liquidity what is the meaning of liquidity what do you understand by liquidity in one word if i want to know whether my organization is liquid enough what i will check liquid assets okay very good liquid assets i will check and what i will check that with liabilities liabilities right liquid liabilities in simple words i'll say that liquidity is nothing but my ability to pay my liabilities in short run short term obligations liquid liabilities i have enough of liquid assets through which i am able to pay my liquid liabilities it is my ability to meet my short term obligations quickly quickness okay with which a business or a company can convert its asset into cash so that whatever they are owing in your future they can be paid okay so it is assessed through use of the ratio analysis we have done liquidity ratio it gives you the insight of the cash solvency of the firm in order to meet all its short term obligations 
current ratio it is which ratio in which the ratio of current assets to current liabilities okay used by corporate units to judge the ability to discharge the short term liabilities which are there for a period of up to 1 year okay so if higher the ratio greater is the ability of the firm no higher the current ratio means what higher is your current assets current assets is more than current liabilities higher the ratio isn't it better yes ma'am of course liquid ratio enables a company to assets its net working capital working capital is denominated how how do we assess working capital it is a combination of current assets and current liabilities basically working capital is nothing but it is current assets minus current liabilities so your working capital is available or no okay how much working capital do you have right so having done we have left with the ready money which are there to meet the day to day need and expenses of the business okay now as we are talking about financial management we are talking about objective to be achieved by the by managing the finance i am talking since when this is profitability is one of the objective profitability what is a profitability i will say that okay my turnover is turnover is 1000 crores turnover but my profit my net profit is only 10 crores how much percentage One point one. Huh, one percent. No. So, do you think that this kind of a margin will be acceptable? See, one thousand crores is the turnover, but when I'm talking about the profit margin, it is hardly anything. It is only one percent. so basically my profitability is a certain with the amount of net profit margin i have so don't you think what do you think if this margin is more it is better or less it is better more obviously i will need more margin as an investor i will obviously look after and i will want to see that what is the profit actually they are making turnover people keep talking in their turnover terms these these big giants they talk in in terms of um, giant companies they talk in form of turnovers that this is their turnover this is the amount of turnover they are doing but what is my profit margin that is important okay it is to view the profitability of any organization the revenue bearing property of sales can be easily assessed from the profit margin so is your sales able to give you that amount of profit okay it is the efficiency of any organization the profitability efficiency of any organization this ratio indicates efficiency of operations as well as how the products are priced okay we both we all know gross profit margin okay and we all know the net profit margin both are important both are important we have also done something like this sales minus variable cost is equal to contribution okay and then when i subtract my fixed cost like my administrative selling expenses etc i arrive at my profit so both is important whether my variable cost is getting absorbed from the sales am i able to get contribution and whether my fixed cost is getting absorbed with the help of this contribution is also very important so net profit margin net profit after taxes upon sales okay it is an indicator of a company's ability to generate profits after paying all the taxes and expenses so decline in the ratio means higher are the expenses okay but higher the ratio it is the better so rate of investment return on investment is what it is nothing but how much earnings before interest and tax is a organization generating upon its assets return on investments we just studied what is investment decisions it is all about capital budgeting capital assets 
so am i able to earn that much amount of profit where in there are assets which are deployed for this particular profit okay so again here higher the ratio better right higher the ratio it is better it is it talks about efficient use of assets and low ratio reflects inefficient use of the assets by a company okay then there is costing and there is a risk obviously this you can read now objectives of the firm since when i'm talking about this profit maximization is the main objective of a firm but now the focus from the traditional profit maximization has shifted to shareholders wealth maximization wealth maximization shareholders are now interested in also knowing that whether there is a wealth increase or not by their investments done in a organization okay so profit maximization obviously it is towards more profitable goods you will have more profitable goods and services your profits will be high your demand supply everything your competition in the market everything is going to determine your productivity and you will be able to maximize your profit if you channelize all these various factors which affect your profit okay now <clears throat> profit maximization is a very important goal in a financial decision making organization however now there is a lot of things which has shifted and now we have wealth maximization so coming to this this particular table which they have given okay both profit maximization versus shareholders wealth maximization the objective is to a certain large amount of profits okay which is easy to calculate the profit okay however emphasizes the short term ignores the risk and uncertainty ignores the timing of the returns and ignores immediate resources okay advantages it is fine profit maximization the objective is to know the large amount of profits amount of profit organization will make advantages it is yes it is easy to calculate it is easy to determine the link between the financial decision and the profit okay but your shareholders wealth maximization the object of that is to find the market value of your common stock okay the value of your stock value of your equity it gives you that okay it emphasizes on the long term it recognizes risk or uncertainty everything risk return relationship is a certain over here recognizes the timings of the returns and considers the return okay so shareholders wealth maximization is now which all the organizations look at and they want to provide this to their shareholders and keep them happy okay however there are certain disadvantages there is no clear relationship between the stock price and financial decisions many things affect the stock price many things okay even your dividend uh, decision will affect your stock price your capital structure will also affect your stock price however there is no direct relationship there can be certain decisions which may increase your stock price also but then also the value of the firm is not increasing okay can lead to management anxiety and frustration so wealth maximization of a shareholder will come only with all these four things first is your profit maximization obviously maintenance of liquidity meeting of financial commitments and fourth one is your properly your proper utilization of funds all these four together leads to wealth maximization economic value addition so many times we have done this even in accounts okay economic value addition is nothing but your amount of profit how much amount of your profit is there to absorb your cost of capital from the company point of view okay so it is it is the conventional approach to measure profit will deduct cost of loan capital in arriving at profit but there is no similar deduction of cost of shareholders okay so your economic value added is after tax cash flow generated by the business okay net operating profit after tax you minus that from the cost of capital which is deployed 
in order to generate this particular cash flow okay so there are two important components in eva one is your net operating profit after charge uh, after tax and the capital charge the cost of capital the time is amount of capital okay the percentage cost of capital is always in percentage okay so eva is nothing but your operating profit minus your capital charge cost of capital into capital one example again over here there is an xyz company it has an investment of rupees 150 crores after operate after tax operating income is given 20 crores and the cost of capital is 12% so what will be your economic value added it will be nothing but your net operating profit after tax which is 20 minus 12% of your 150 crores okay your capital investment is 150 crores so capital employed capital charge capital employed is nothing but a capital charge okay percent capital deployed or capital assets etc okay or your investments so 2 crores and there is one more example which they have given then coming to so your profit uh maximization of profit and shareholders value addition eba everything is very important from your exam point of view okay now financial distress and insolvency now what does this mean financial distress means there is a stress on finance it is not able to pay its say interest okay see interest is something which you have to pay it's not like dividend okay okay fine profits is there then we will pay the dividends rate also will depend interest so you have to pay only it is some kind of an expense which is which is your financial decisions you have taken and you are supposed to pay your interest on amount which you have taken from the blenders okay so you have borrowed something you have to pay the interest so when an organization is not able to pay the interest okay and this particular position or this particular situation continues over a period of time what will happen to them first tell me let's go back again first tell me why will an organization not be able to pay interest when will that situation arise when they go bankrupt when because when the problems what are the many any topics when the Any firm is not able to make profits okay or is it not or is the sales getting affected see from sales i will have my variable cost i also explained you from that i will get my contribution from that i will minus my fixed cost i'll get profit where does interest come in fixed cost na you have to pay so basically your sales are also affected means you are not able to maintain that much amount of sales to have a good amount of contribution which will absorb your fixed cost so over the time if you are not able to pay what will happen is you will start selling your products at a low price at a, you'll then after that you will start selling your assets at a low price which is known as a distress sale and if that also continues you will finally lead to insolvency wherein now you are not able to pay any of your debts okay so basically see what they are saying generally affairs of the firm should be managed in such a way that the total risk business as well as the financial risk both borne by the equity holders is minimized and is manageable otherwise the firm would obviously face difficulties because equity shareholders are the owners so you have to take care of them okay so your the risk also has to be minimized it has to be managed in a manner wherein you keep them happy in managing the business risk the firm has to cope up with the variability of the demand of its products price input prices etc input output ratio everything they have to keep in mind it also has to keep a tab on its fixed cost fixed cost 
okay so high proportion of a debt in a capital structure entails a high level of interest payment and it becomes risky for the equity shareholders if cash inflow is inadequate the firm will face difficulties in payment of interest and then repayment of principal eventually if this situation continues for a long term they will be face pressures from the creditors now if you face pressure from the creditors what will happen you will have to sell your assets by to which you have taken the loan you have mortgaged your assets you will have to sell it failure of sales can also cause difficulties in carrying out the production operations so they are in a tight position in a tight spot okay investors will now not invest you will not be able to get more money creditors will want to have their loan back okay so you will have capital market would heavily discounted securities in this situation the firm would find itself in a situation called distress it will have to sell its asset to discharge its obligations to the outsiders you know and they will resort to the distressed sale for this particular assets okay so a firm's technical inability to pay its current obligations is its current fixed assets okay will lead to distress okay this failure can be temporary it can be remedial it can be brought back to the position which it was there however if this particular condition cannot be revived obviously they will lead to a insolvency position okay last topic is your financial management whether it is a science or whether it is an art so it is both okay it is both why it is both obviously it is science you need to know no science is what you are doing a particular activity which will give results what is science you perform a particular experiment which has any results okay how you are performing is an art so it is both it is also a social science why because it involves people it involves an organization it involves with the people deals with the people so it's a social science as well as it is a physical science it is a chem, you know it is it involves chemistry it involves statistics so it is a science which is in itself okay complete science and how you are going to apply it it gives you a feature of an art also so this you can read okay now emerging roles of financial manager with the time financial manager have become very very important for any business organization okay taking the right decisions because they are the ones who have the entire insights of the industry of how to manage the finance which particular stock gives returns how to keep the investors happy okay everything is there so financial managers are very very important okay so they have certain responsibilities and duties firstly they have to forecasting of the cash flow for day to day operations you need cash okay current liquidity okay inflow against your outflow is necessary to be measured next is raising of the funds from where the funds should be raised mobilization of the funds okay available resources which are there which one should be chose third managing the flow with all your internal funds okay whatever surplus which you have okay whether the retained earnings managing them okay if you can use those re retained earnings for your further expansion or capital assets you should always take care of that also to facilitate cost control if your cost is less obviously your profit will be high to facilitate pricing of the product product lines and servicing okay so product price where the product is being sold your entire geographical area the services which you provide all this has to be kept in mind forecasting the profits measuring the required return which the shareholders are expecting managing of the assets and lastly managing of the funds okay so it is a responsibility of the manager to have adequate funds at its disposal to meet its short term liabilities also to take care of the all investment decisions with the organization wants to make okay followed by your financing decision dividend decision etc 
which will lead to profit maximization and shareholders value addition shareholders wealth maximization okay so this is it all the important concepts okay which is very much from your module only from your exam point of view okay so this is your lesson nature scope and importance of your financial management okay nature significance and scope of financial management clear thank you everyone